Hi, this is Tim Ecclesy from Atlanta, Georgia. Today's podcast is called Stuttering is a Game of Patience. If you stutter, you know this to be true. From attempting to talk and patiently easing out stutters to being patient with ourselves when we have a difficult job interview, conversation, an oral report with stuttering, people interrupting us, coping and recovering. So stuttering is a game of patience. If you're a parent or a teacher supporting someone who stutters, do your best to demonstrate the patience that you would want if you had trouble. So I've broken this into 10 talking points. The first talking point is kind of a reality after doing 28 years of speech therapy is that a person who stutters, a metaphor that works is talking is kind of like a road with speed humps. You know the road where speed humps are real close together in a subdivision or shopping mall parking lot. When speed humps are close together, we drive about 10 miles an hour because we're preparing for the next hump. We want our vehicle to smoothly transition over the hump. If you're a person who stutters and you anticipate a big stutter coming, you want to apply your brakes and transition forward over and through the stutter. A lot of people who stutter hit the stutter, freak out, back up to previous words, insert ums and likes, and then accelerate and hit the speed hump or the stutter again, just compounding the issue. So apply your brakes when you come to the hump, to the stutter, and always move forward over and through the stutter. Good eye contact is important there too. Number two is talk your speed. It's so tempting to try to keep up with people who don't stutter, people who talk really quickly, We can have a belief that we have to talk fast or we're a burden or we want to show off and talk fast. And if we speed up in an unnatural way, attempting to please somebody else, we're probably going to have more difficulty talking. I have a podcast separate to rate of speech, the speed of talking that you'd like to hear later on. Some languages are just fast. In my experience here in Atlanta, Georgia, when I listen to someone speak Spanish who's fluent in Spanish, it shocks me sometimes to hear how fast they can articulate these different words. And thank God I don't speak Spanish because there's no way I could keep up with these people who can speak so quickly in a foreign language. Number three is the idea of like a revolving door at a hotel. It's a lot of, it's diff, it was very difficult for me to enter a conversation, an existing conversation, um, try to contribute, participate, add something, you know, crack a joke. It's difficult a lot of times for people who stutter to jump into those conversations in the cafeteria at school, at a restaurant, And I started to work in my own brain thinking of conversations like a revolving door. You know, when you're looking through a revolving door and someone already has one leg in, you yield, you let it turn one section, and then you enter the revolving door. Even if someone's behind you sweating for you, they're in a hurry, they want you to enter it when you're not ready, You have to stand your ground and enter the revolving door when you're ready. The reality is, unless you're the CEO of the company or a celebrity, people aren't going to stop and go, hey, we haven't heard from you. What's your opinion? It just doesn't happen. So what I found, let's pretend there's four people in the room. The guy right across from me, his name is Chase. The revolving door is turning. Everyone's talking about football, maybe. What I'm going to do when Chase makes a comment, I'm going to go, yeah, Chase, I agree with that, or I disagree with that. Now, 
the revolving door has stopped and I've entered the conversation and I'm going to say what I want to say until I'm interrupted again because that's about to happen, right? Everyone is one-upping e- each other. So number three is think of, think of entering conversations patiently like a revolving door. Number four, if you do have what we call techniques, fluency shaping, stuttering, modification, you better have patience because your articulators, your tongue, lips, and voice require patience as you enter the stutter, you approach the stutter. Let's pretend I fear my first name. You know, Tim, I have to be patient. I also have a podcast about they cover things like time pressure and, and techniques. So the ability to use any of the techniques that are common in speech pathology require patience. Something called a pullout. A pullout is when you re- release the stutter and release the word on an exhalation. That requires a lot of patience. Number five is if you're in the middle of an exacerbation or a regression. Let's pretend you've really had a difficult day, difficult week with stuttering, stuttering more than you're accustomed to, and you're really bothered by it. We can use the word regression or an exacerbation or a flare-up. Forgive yourself, and that this is a moment for patience if there ever was one. It's kind of like in sports, if you're in a batting slump, Maybe last season you batted three and a quarter. Now you're batting 219 and you might get benched. You know, they have expression like the ball looks really small instead of looks big. You're not injured, but you're in a slump. A slump, a batting slump, or in golf, what are called the yips when you keep missing putts, but you're not injured, that's psychological. Like you're beating yourself up and an exacerbation and stuttering requires a great deal of patience. Number six, if people interrupt you, and people do interrupt, do your best to depersonalize it. I used to get so angry when I got interrupted, I thought, hey, I mean, everyone should know I stutter. How dare you interrupt me? The reality in the world is that everyone seems to interrupt everybody. And do hold your ground, do be assertive, do speak up. Then there's also times where we just have to allow, let somebody take the conversation over briefly and then like the revolving door, get back in. Number seven is self-advocacy requires a lot of patience. If you're being teased or bullied, stand up, say, I stutter, so what? or I stutter, grow up. If you need to talk to your teacher, your employer, do so. Requires a lot of patience. I used to get teased and bullied and I let people do it. I had teachers tell me, just try to, just try to, you know, forget about it, ignore it. That doesn't work, folks. So self-advocacy requires patience. If you're told to talk slow by others, maybe you say, well, as soon as you talk slow, I will. (laughs) That's self-advocacy. How about if if I use disclosure? Disclosure is a hot topic. It's telling people you stutter. There's different ways to do it is just... Uh, I met a guy in sales, and he said that at the beginning of his sales pitch, he'll say, "Hey, I'm Tim Mackesy. It's so glad I'm so glad to be here today to speak to your group. I just want you to know I stutter." You know that requires patience to disclose, to tell people you stutter. So many people who stutter are caught up in trying to conceal the stutter. Don't stutter. I can't stutter during the interview. So, self advocacy and disclosure are really a form of patience, if you think about it. Number eight, there's specific moments when you stutter that are very difficult that require a lot of patience. Here's an example. 
You're calling a restaurant to place an order for takeout food. As soon as, and you've prepared yourself, like, I would like a large pepperoni pizza with black olives and a Greek salad. So I'm, God, I'm just all ready. I feel composed. I want to get my words out patiently. And as soon as they answer, they say, can you hold, please? It's like, oh, man, I was ready to talk, and now I've got to hold. So I'm waiting. Maybe there's a little song in the background. Then, of course, the person answers, and they go, can I have your order, please? They're super fast. There's dishes clanging in the background. There's ambient noise. And I was composed. I was ready. And now they're rushing me, and I've got to be patient. We can also have a belief that I can tell they're busy, so I have to say it fast. Almost like I have to say it fast to please them because I can tell they're so busy. That will be self-fulfilling, and I'm going to end up having a lot of difficulty. So these situations with phone ordering, noise in the background, being put on hold, drive through windows, speaker boxes. These specific moments, if you stutter, require uber patience. Number nine is the art of recovering. And I have a podcast that talks about being able to recover after moments of stuttering. When you look at sports, you look at a young gymnast who was at the Olympics. They've traveled halfway across the world. Their family has saved all their money, traveled over there. They're witnesses. There's 20,000 people in the stadium. Your coach, your teammates, you're, you're competing for your country. You're competing for a medal. The first routine is a balance beam. You start going down the balance beam and you actually fall. In gymnastics, they get back on the beam, they finish the routine, they dismount, and they pretend like they never fell. It's amazing. In front of 20,000 people who all gasped. It's similar to ice skaters. They take a devastating fall. Ice is like cement. They get up, they compose themselves, and they finish the routine as though they never fell. People who stutter, if we can do that, if we can forgive ourselves and recover, in the middle of a moment of stuttering, a display of patience is to use a sense of humor. So I, 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 I'll spit it out. You know, a sense of humor, be able to recover, be able to disclose, is also an exercise of patience. It's easy during a moment of stuttering to panic. You go in the fight or flight response. You begin avoiding or word changing, or you just cut yourself off because you don't want to work that hard. You got embarrassed. So it requires a lot of patience to recover. Remember what you have to say is important. So recover, rally, and be heard. Number 10, anyone listening to this has a metaphor in their life separate than stuttering However, it correlates to stuttering. Here's an example. For me, it's golf. There's a book called Golf is a Game of Confidence by sports psychologist Bob Rotella. If you play golf, you've probably read it. Golf is a game of confidence. Stuttering is a game of patience. So if you learn the, to play the piano, the, the guitar, really any instrument, it's required excruciating patience. When you make a mistake, you miss a note, you slow down, you start over, and you build on a song. You build on a song until you can do the song from beginning to end. If you're a golfer, the first hole is a par four. You tee off and you get an eight on the first hole. You are now four over par. That's called a snowman. It's brutal to get a snowman on the first hole. Or you keep missing pots. That's called the yips, and it can drive you loco. 
So many, many, many instances in sports require patience, oftentimes in front of an audience. You're a pitcher in the major leagues in the World Series, the Tampa Bay Rays against the Dodgers. You give up four runs in the first inning. The manager says that the bullpen is nicked up. I need six innings from you. You gave up four runs in the first inning in Major League Baseball. That is not good. So you've got to forgive yourself, become patient, and rally in front of an audience of 50,000 people when there's no pandemic. So patience is applicable. Surely you have a metaphor in your life of something, a hobby, a skill, something that you've been extraordinarily patient with in your life. Map those resources over. So stuttering is a game of patience. There's no cure for stuttering that we know, there, and, there, and there never will be. So if you're a person who stutters and you want to deal with it, manage it, cope well with it, be resourceful, be brave, be resilient, speak up, be heard, it requires an amazing amount of patience. Any speech pathologists out there listening appreciate the patience it takes for your clients to read out loud, do a book report, or just talk. So everybody stuttering is a game of patience. Thank you for listening.